Hey everybody, Tactic Angel here, playing some World of Warships on the PlayStation 4. Today we're going to be talking about the first of the German battleships, the so-called KMS Scharnhorst. So-called because the Third Reich didn't actually have a designation for ships, but a lot of people today like to use Kriegmarine Schiffe as an unofficial designation. But anyway, Depending on whom you ask, the Scharnhorst is a battlecruiser or a battleship launched by the German Socialist Workers' Party in 1936. She was the lead ship in her class, followed by the Gneisenau. The Scharnhorst operated most of her service in tandem with her one and only sister ship. The Scharnhorst had a rather troubled career, though without many successes. Because of the limitations imposed upon Germany following World War I, the Germans were more or less starting from scratch, and their chief opponent throughout the war was the Royal Navy, which might have taken some black eyes in the First World War, but they had yet to relinquish the greatest Navy sailing on the Seven Seas title until sometime during World War II. And even when they did that, they didn't do it to a foe, but to an ally, the United States of America. Thus it happens that the Scharnhorst was damaged in her first engagement with an armored merchant cruiser, she returned for repairs and set out again with her sister ship, this time for the invasion of Denmark and Norway. Joined by the Hipper, which is currently the Tier 7 German cruiser, the three ships were attacked by the RAF without much effect. A storm later damaged the Scharnhorst, and then, of course, they were also attacked by HMS Renown, and suffered a major torpedo hit from HMS Acasta, a Tier 4 Royal Navy ship in Legends. All of this damage forced the Scharnhorst back for repair, however, the combined arms of the Scharnhorst and Gneisenau did spell the end for the Acasta and HMS Glorious, a Royal Navy aircraft carrier. Following her repair, the Scharnhorst returned to the seas, where again she was with the Gneisenau under the flag of Gunther Lutjens. Now where have I heard that name before? The Scharnhorst was plagued with some mechanical difficulties and had to put into port again. After leaving dock, she was almost immediately attacked by aircraft, sustaining several bomb hits, which honestly would have been quite a bit worse had the bombs actually detonated. The Scharnhorst lost her sister ship, effectively, after Operation Cerberus. After this, she was deployed to Norway to try to disrupt supplies flowing into the Union of Soviet Socialist Republics eventually being swarmed by the Royal Navy battleship Duke of York under the command of Bruce Fraser. Where have I heard that name before? And, of course, Cruiser Belfast, Norfolk, Sheffield, and thus the Scharnhorst was finally sunk. Following her destruction, the naval legend Bruce Fraser was quoted as saying, Gentlemen, the battle against the Scharnhorst has ended in victory for us. I hope that any of you who are ever called upon to lead a ship into action against an opponent many times superior will command your ship as gallantly as the Scharnhorst was commanded today. Truly this is a sentiment that represents the honor and camaraderie that even opponents can feel for one another when they engage in an undertaking so bold and so dangerous as naval combat. So as we move into the actual boat review though, in terms of World of Warships Legend, the game, I'm going to be real upfront about this because I know a lot of people watch these things thinking, should I get this boat? Should I not? Is it worth the money? And I will say that I personally enjoy this boat quite a bit, but should you buy the Scharnhorst? No, probably not. Well, why? We'll start this time with artillery. And and this is really more or less the reason why you're probably always going to be at a disadvantage to your teams unless you're a really, really good player. Essentially, the Scharnhorst is a super cruiser taking up a battleship position and more than half of the time you're going to be ending up in a game where you're fighting against an Iowa or an Amagi and neither of these ships are going to have any problem taking you apart, particularly the Iowa. The main battery for the Scharnhorst is essentially three turrets with three guns each at 11 inches, or 283 millimeters as, as measured here. Now you do have a pretty impressive amount of secondary shots. Um, this said, 
it's showing that you have 7 times 2, 105 millimeter, 4 times 1, 150 millimeter. You also have two additional turrets on top of this, and simply there's no way to scroll down to see what those shots are actually doing. Uh, that said, you have an impressive secondary. Now when you're thinking about purchasing this ship, you have to think about a couple of things, right? Because most of the time you're thinking, can I perform well in this ship? So is the main battery going to do its job? 11 inch guns are simply not 1940s technology. You're talking turn of the century battleships being built with this caliber gun and unless you're shooting at a cruiser you're not going to be able to get through much of anything. I know when I've been playing against other people who are in the Scharnhorst they are shooting AP at me and even a moderate amount of angling is going to allow me to bounce their shots. If you're thinking about it the battleship is really good at burst damage you hit that citadel, you you totally wreck somebody, and that's what you're there to do. The Scharnhorst simply can't do that. Now, what this ship is good at is shooting a lot of HE pretty quickly, and you have a decent chance of setting things on fire. Here you see 21.5. I think that's actually up from a base of 20. I'm using Sheer as my commander, and I think I get 1.5% on top of the base. That said, you're not going to be as good at lighting things on fire as, say, the Royal Navy. And that's a little bit of a problem, though you do have a faster firing rate, even if it's only by a little bit. In terms of survivability, you are reasonably survivable. You're in the mid 50,000s in terms of your overall hit points. Your armor is certainly not terrible, though you can get citadeled from the front. You do have turtle back armor, so that helps a little bit from the side. And your torpedo reduction is a decent 22%. One thing that most battleships cannot boast are torpedoes. And the Scharnhorst comes with one triple launcher that can shoot to either side. Uh, these do a reasonable amount of damage. 13700 is not exactly a ton. It's not exactly nothing. They are very fast and they have a reasonably short range. So I would put these in the F off variety, but the truth of the matter is that you are going to want to try to use these in order to supplement the lack of damage that the main battery can do. For AA defense, none of this really matters right now. You are decent, not great, decent. That's all I can say. For maneuverability, we're looking at a Scharnhorst running around at around 30 knots. That's pretty good for a battleship, particularly at tier 6. Your turning circle is terrible, but your rudder shift time is good. Um, so what you'll find is... That in terms of making little maneuvers and kind of getting out of the way of torpedoes, you're pretty okay. But if you need to go in a different direction, it's going to take you a while. The other thing about your maneuverability is that this, combined with the turret traverse of your turrets, is actually going to make sure that pretty much, unless something weird happens, you're not going to be outrunning the turret traverse with your turn. So you're always pretty much going to be able to whip those guns around pretty quickly, and the Sharn Horse manages to turn those guns around very fast for a battleship. For concealment as a battle cruiser, you will not be surprised that the Sharn Horse is pretty stealthy for a battleship, but not all that stealthy for a cruiser. So, you know, take of it what you will. Uh, you will definitely get detected if you are firing even through smoke, but if you're not firing, you have a reasonably low sea detectability range. All right, so let's get into a battle. Here we are on Neighbors, and I will remind you, I am using the base commander Sheer because I have neither Hipper nor Ciliac. So take of this what you will. I'm on Neighbors playing a battleship without a battleship commander. So here we go. We're going to roll out towards sea since we're pretty much already there. And 
one thing I will say is the Scharnhorst is a beautiful ship. Uh, whether or not I think this is a really good ship for most people to play, it is definitely a lot of fun to look at, and I do, once again, enjoy playing the boat. Uh, so anyway, we're going to go out towards this east side. You can see I get detected there. There's a reasonable amount of difference between my maximum range and my sea detectability, but obviously that Mayhan has sailed inside of it. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and play probably most of this game shooting nothing but HE. Obviously we want to shoot HE at a destroyer because there's really not a lot of point of shooting AP at it since it doesn't have a citadel. Uh, we do manage to incapacitate some stuff, set some stuff on fire, and if we're really, really lucky, maybe we can get a kill here. Yes! Yes, he can. Uh, we have a couple of other ships coming up here. We've got a, a New Orleans. Now, I will say that you can get through the side of a New Orleans. It's a little hit or miss. I mean, obviously, it's hit or miss, but I do not immediately recognize the fact that they're trying to play the smoke screen, and I do not play the fact that he is decelerating in order to get into it, so um, it wouldn't have mattered if I was shooting AP, HE, or... Uh, rubber ducks at the guy. I wouldn't have done much of anything. Uh, so we shoot a whole bunch of AP there. You can see not a great result. Not exactly a an aggressive amount of of targeting there. I wasn't specifically trying to hit him at the waterline or anything, but we don't get a lot out of it. That Colorado's retreating, and since the New Orleans is hiding in the smoke, I'm going to go ahead get behind this island and put out this fire. We hit our first repair kit and that's going to help us recover some of our hit points. Um, I certainly hope to get Ciliac so that I can um, increase the effectiveness of this. He would be my ideal commander if you have him certainly. The Sharnhorst is a little bit better value for you. You're going to get more money for your dollar. That doesn't make any sense. Whatever. You're going to get more mileage out of your purchase if you have Ciliac as your commander uh, or pretty much anybody with with Hipper as your uh, inspiration. Or even S Hipper as your commander. He is a battleship commander. I just wouldn't pick him myself. So we're sailing around this island. We're hoping to come around on this Colorado. Uh, that's not actually going to work out all that bad for me. I'm going to be able to shoot HE at the side of this guy. And I was kind of hoping that he would probably continue to target that other boat. Uh, now we do get a pretty good amount of shells that land on him. So we get two fires. I imagine that he will put those out immediately. That's the smart thing to do. Uh, but it does look like we have a New Orleans here who is not going anywhere, and if he's going anywhere, it's backwards. So we're going to put shells out on him. Uh, we set a couple fires, but I'm sure he's going to go ahead and put those out right away. Because he has um, what is called no life. And there we go, we get our second kill of the game on 18,000 damage. What a remarkable job you're doing, Tactic Angel. So anyway, there's Colorado. I still really want this Colorado. Uh, this is actually fairly early in my playing of this ship, trying to get a feel for it. Um, not some impressive accuracy there, but a little bit better. We managed to knock off some capture points. We already have eight capture point hits. Pretty decent there. I like that. Now you will notice I will aim a little bit further back on most ships and a little high with the Sharn Horse. Just like you would be with a cruiser, you want to make sure that you hit the superstructure with these 11 inch guns. You do have very big guns for a cruiser. 
and extraordinarily small guns for a battleship. So I find it works best if you try to maximize HE damage against superstructures and sometimes the bow of a ship, sometimes the stern, uh, but definitely not the, the meaty part in the middle where all the armor is. Um, we do a pretty good job there of ignoring quite a bit of damage. Um, we've obviously made some mistakes here with our life, but we managed to turn away and get out of the range of whoever was shooting at us. And here's what I'm talking about with the bow and the stern, because I'm going to wait for this guy to present his bow to me. I've got some torpedoes in the water. I hit with two out of the three of them. I honestly didn't expect to hit with any more than that. And then we get a couple of extra shots into him with our guns. So this is one of the things that the Sharn Horse is really good at, and this is what I would call kissing my aft goodbye. Um, this is something that the German ships with torpedoes can do. Swing that that back side of my ship around real quick. I get the torpedoes out really pretty quickly, honestly. And and as as much as I might complain about the ship, like this has really good arcs, and for the most part, Germans have very good arcs on their torpedoes. Uh, and the Scharnhorst is no different. You saw I was able to get those torpedoes around pretty quickly thanks to the the close range maneuverability of this ship. And there we go. I'm trying to once again use my torpedoes to maximum effect, firing while he can't actually see that I see him, at least physically and you see we've got a wide spread out there I'm kind of playing my odds here but it doesn't look like he's gonna be able to do much about this in terms of missing one or more of, of the actual torpedoes you will notice one of the things that you want to do when you're fighting against one of these ships is um, give them a few seconds of confidence by sailing in the one direction and then suddenly change direction and actually what happens right here is essentially this guy does the same thing to me I overplay uh, the direction that he's going but he takes a hard to starboard and I'm gonna miss with all those torpedoes I do manage to secure the high caliber somewhere in the middle of all of this and that's pretty okay. Uh, you can see some torpedoes coming at me. I'm on fire several times and there's... There's just no getting out of it at this point. But all in all, we did a pretty decent job here. Uh, we did 108,000 damage and hopefully our team will go on to victory. And as luck would have it, Tactic Angel wins again. Wow, what, what an amazing feat. It's like I handpicked this game. Uh, but hopefully this has been a pretty good indication of what the Sharn Horse can do. Uh, if you want to buy it, go ahead and do it. Obviously I said don't do it, but whatever. Hopefully you've enjoyed the video. I'll see you guys on the next one.